Welcome to Electro Online. So now we're going to start showing a number of examples. Uh, starting out with some easy ones and then working our way through some more difficult ones. Typically the difficult ones are finding the the limits of integration when we're dealing with strange shapes that we have to envision three-dimensionally. But here we start with something simple where we have limits for x, y, and z defined from negative 1 to 2, 0 to 3, and 0 to 2, which means we're dealing with a volume that is uh, rectangular in shape. So if we're going to integrate this, of course, Cartesian or rectangle coordinates are the easiest. So our dv then becomes simply the product of dx, dy, dz. So we write it as follows. So this is equal to the triple integral of 12xy squared z cubed and we're going to write this as dz dy dx now typically the order doesn't really matter we can do a dx dy dz dy dz dx it doesn't matter which order you take as long as you match the limits so this will become our first integral over z then over y then over x so first we put in the z limits here from 0 to 2 then we put in the y limits from 0 to 3 and then we put in the x limits from minus 1 to 2 and the 12 can come out so let's go ahead and do that so we'll go ahead and put the 12 and get rid of that and the first thing we do is we're going to integrate over z that means x and y remain constant so this becomes equal to 12 times the double integral from minus 1 to 2 and from 0 to 3 and we end up with x square of x y squared the x is not squared and z cubed becomes z to the fourth over four and then we're going to evaluate that from zero to two and then we still have our dy dx like this of course when we plug in the lower limit we'll get zero plug in the upper limit we get the following so first let's bring the, the four out so this becomes 12 divided by four times the double integral from minus 1 to 2 from 0 to 3 and we end up with x y squared plug in the upper limit we get 2 to the fourth power the 4 was already taken out so we end up with 2 to the fourth power that would be a 16. 4 divided by 16 well uh, oh i can't forget my dy dx dy dx uh, 16 divided by 4 is 4 times 12 is 48 so now we get 48 times the integral from minus 1 to 2 and now we're going to integrate y squared dy so this becomes x times y cubed over 3 x remains constant and we're going to evaluate that from 0 to 3 and again in this case when we plug in the lower limit we get nothing plug in the upper limit we get the following so this is equal to 48 times the integral from minus 1 to 2 uh, oh, I can't forget my dx. I keep forgetting my differentials there because I still have a dx here. So we end up with x and y cubed. When y becomes 3, that's 3 cubed, which is 27 over 3. Like this, dx. And then, of course, uh, 27 over 3 is 9. 9 times 48. Well, let's just write it like this. So this will become equal to 48 times 9 times the integral of x dx from minus 1 to 2. So next, let's come up here. Let's continue over here. So now, what's 9 times 48? That's 480 minus 50. That's uh, 430 uh, plus 2, uh, 432. So we end up at 432 times the integral of x dx from negative 1 to 2. Of course, that's an easy integral, so this becomes 432 times x squared over 2, evaluate from minus 1 to 2. Now, 2 goes into 432, that would be 216, so this is equal to 216 times, when you plug in the upper limit, because the 2 is gone now, we get x squared, that means 4, minus when we plug in the lower limit, we get 1, so that's 3 times 216, that would be 648. Yep. Uh, no, because when I square it, I get a plus 1. So it's minus a plus 1 because it's 1 squared, right? So, so like that, if one look at that. So therefore, 
it's 4 minus 1, or 3, 3 times 2, 16 is 648. So that's how we do that. That's the mechanics of doing triple integration. Again, the order doesn't matter if you want to try it again, but reverse order and do it in a different order, you'll get the exact same result. So no problem there. So that's the mechanization. Typically, when we write the differentials like this, you start with the first one, then you go to the second one, then you go to the third one. That's traditional. Again, as long as you have them paired up. If you're not sure, then if you plug in the numbers here, so maybe we write uh, z is equal to from 0 to 2, and then we have y is equal to from 0 to 3, and x is equal to negative 1 to 2, because that's usually the question, right? When you do triple integration, the limits, which variable do they belong to? So it's really not a bad idea, instead of just writing the numbers here, to actually indicate which variables are associated with the limits so we don't get confused. Sometimes that's also a potential problem. Well, at least that's how it's done.